Welcome to another episode of the No Ceilings Podcast. I am Tyler Metcalf, joined as always by Tyler Rucker. Rucker, big game tonight. How are you feeling? Um, not. I mean, not awesome. I, I'm really excited for this episode. Um, I feel like the Avenger scene, wherein you know, don't give me hope. That's what that's what's going on with the Celtics. I don't want to go too deep into it, but I'm struggling. A lot of optimism today. I feel like I woke up at like 5 a.m. No alarm clock, just ready to go. Thank you, draft season. And then quickly realize, like, oh gosh, Celts play today. I got to get ready. So, been a long day. We're recording this early. Thank you so much, Metcalf, for doing that. Um, how are you doing? Most importantly, let's talk. Let's talk about how Mr. Metcalf's doing. Uh, j- just swell. Very eager for this uh, long holiday weekend. Going up to the cabin, enjoy some time on the lake with the dog. Some some cold beers. Not a care in the world. Um, cannot wait. So I, I'm hoping that your Celtics pull it off, just so we have a little more basketball through the weekend, a little more drama, and uh, you know, just a little more emotional torture for you that can entertain me. Is that too selfish? Yeah, a little bit. I well, mean, well. I, it's just funny. Uh, you know, why why not the Celts? You know, it, no one's come back from 3-0, right? So why not why not this time? Let's let's see what happens. This would be unbelievable. I think they got to win big tonight to have a shot to pull a comeback. But Miami, man, gosh, I trying to beat Miami four times in a row is really tough. So um, it's I just want this series to go as long as possible, just for basketball entertainment sake and. You know, once the Celts are out, I feel like I'm going to be completely just draft maniac mode. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we're, we're going to find out. I'm going to be pacing around the room, <laughs> probably in my defensive stance in front of the TV. It's really embarrassing, but, you know, got to gotta pull out all the stops right now. Um, Metcalf, I'm pumped for this one. Draft season's heating up. We've got like, what, 28 days? <sighs> Something like that. Um, 27 as everyone's listening to this. Draft guide's coming out Monday. A lot of a lot of exciting things going on at No Ceilings. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, well, we're just going to run through some of our favorite sleepers uh, in this year's draft, and obviously, the term sleeper is different depending on who's talking, who's listening, who's looking at the the player. Um, for the sake of this conversation, we're going to kind of go with guys who we have kind of seen in the in the consensus end of the first round or later. Um, so these are guys that we may ha- have them a little higher on our board than where consensus has them, but they're guys that we think could or should be earning a little more attention, um, have a little more to their games than they've necessarily gotten credit for and could really outperform wherever they do end up getting drafted if they do it all. Um, so I think we're just going to kind of run through five names a piece. Yeah. Um, I don't know who you've brought to the table, but Hit me with you. You you start off. You I, I I like sometimes when we switch it up. I hate being the guy. You know, sometimes I I like to lead off, but sometimes I want to hear Metcalf set the tone. So set the tone for the sleepers edition because everyone loves a sleeper. So let's let's throw some sleepers out for these folks. Okay, uh, this is a guy who I am shocked isn't getting as much love as I think he deserves. I think he should be a first round lock. Um, I'm going Julian Strother. Uh, oh, good start. And I feel like we just kind of keep seeing him in like the early second round at best. Um, I have him top 25. Just looking at his shooting numbers this year, they are absolutely bonkers. Uh, spot up 97th percentile, transition 84th percentile, off screen 77th percentile. And he improved a fuck ton as a ball handler and an on ball scorer. And he's in the 77th percentile as a pick and roll ball handler. Uh, 93rd percentile shooting off the catch, 71st percentile shooting off the dribble, 94th percentile with runners. The dude is a scorer. I think he's really, really, really underrated uh, somehow in that realm. Um, On top of that, I think he's an incredible rebounder, especially for his position. Obviously, there are questions about the defense and all that stuff, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see him have a Desmond Bain esque start to his career. That's why I wanted you to lead off. Way to set the tone. Damn, I'm proud of you. All right. So let's have some fun here. Um, I absolutely love Julian Strother. I think this is going to be one of those highway robbery picks wherever he goes. 15.2 points per game, 6.2 rebounds. He's around 6'7. Um, shooting splits of 46.9, 40.8, 77. Point six. 
the dude took massive leaps this year as a lethal outside shooter. And I'm not just talking about like a foot behind the line. He was pulling up from the parking lot. I think there's just a lot of really good tools for him to become a plus rotation asset early on for a team that's potentially picking later in the first round. It, it's going to be fascinating because I feel like in this year's draft, you know, we have a lot of teams that are going to have multiple picks. So there's not that classic, you know, late first round of just playoff teams. So I'm curious to see if maybe one of those teams is going to try to trade up back into the first round. Shout out Brad Stevens. I'd love Strasser to be on the Celtics. I'm okay. That's my last Celtics plug for the day. But on a serious note, like there's a lot of teams you run through the late twenties and it makes a lot of sense to add Strother. I, I look at the Sacramento Kings. I think that would be maybe a little bit of a shocker to some people, but I think that would be a fantastic addition. If you, you know, if your last two drafts were Keegan Murray and Julian Strother, you're getting some really talented basketball players. So I, I think Strother checks a lot of boxes. I think the defense is going to come around. Um, and I don't think he's one of those you can't have him on the court sometimes. Yeah. I think he's just going to, you know, it's going to take some time. Like Metcalf always says, there's not a lot of unbelievable rookie defenders. Like it's very tough to stand out that way. So um, I'm right there with you. I think Strother is going to keep impressing. I think someone's going to buy and someone's going to believe and someone's going to get a steal wherever he goes. Yeah. And I, I think the the defense has been the big hang up with a lot of people with him all year. But I, I, none of it feels like glaring or unfixable or, like you said, unplayable. Um, sure, he might get targeted early in his career, but he's big enough where he's going to at least get to a point where he can hold his own or he's not a complete negative where he's killing them on the defensive end of the floor. And then just to circle back to his scoring absurdity, uh, Synergy's shot uh, quality stat uh this year you know basically how many points they expected him to score per possession uh based on the shots that he took was 0 0.94 points per or points per shot he scored 1.14 that's 0.2 points per shot more than he was expected to he took some absurd shots uh off movement off pull up from deep in the lane it, his scoring game scoring arsenal this year was so impressive and if he ends up going to a team like Memphis or like you said Sacramento or Indiana even Charlotte at 27 I think that's a really good outlet for a lot of those teams who have this high level athletic playmaker and being able to kick out to him basically anywhere over half court and have it be a good shot sign me up his um I was doing a little project for no ceilings. There's a little breadcrumb for everyone. And I was getting all these shot charts from, you know, synergy and, and trying to just, I was interested to see how everyone's shot chart looked from last year. And, you know, like with synergy, it's like, okay, blue and red zones, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going through everyone and I get to Strother and it's just red galore. And I was yeah. just like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, when you just open up the page, like I had seen a couple in a row that were like blue everywhere. And I was like, Ew. and all of a sudden Strother, it looked like the computer screen was on fire. So it's going to be really interesting. I think he's going to be one of these just plug and play. And you know, he's got an NBA skill. It's that outside shot. He's also got another NBA skill. I think it's his rebounding and his desire to be a wing that rebounds and makes an impact on that side of the floor. So I like Strother a lot. I think that's a great, great tone setter, Metcalf. I'm really proud of you. You know, you, you, you understood the assignment and you brought the heat right out of the gate. So, okay. Um, let's get to your first one, but first let's take a quick break. All right, Rucker, uh, looking at your kind of list, who's the first name you want to talk about? I'm going to make Corey and uh, I'm going to make Corey and Albert pretty proud with this one. I'm going to go with Jaime Jaquez of UCLA. Now, Metcalf just rolled his eyes, so I can no, I already didn't. tell this is no, going to get spicy. I just am doing my final, you know, kind of refresher on film, and, and you know, we got. We're almost around the corner. It's going to be, we're going to look up and be like, oh my gosh, there's three weeks to the draft. Like that's how fast this is cooking right now. And every time I watch Hawkeyes, just the intelligence, the, the shot making, the footwork is just like unbelievable to watch. And I think 
he has his limitations. He also has some areas of his game that I think are really important right now for I, I believe he will be able to translate that with the modern NBA. Like, I think he'll be a plus asset. I just am betting on him figuring it out. And wouldn't it shock me if he goes late for his round. Wouldn't it shock me if he goes, you know, early second and is one of those like, oh, we got Hawkes too. Like, this is a heck of a haul. And I think he's, you know, there's some stuff defensively with his closeouts. I think he needs to clean up a little bit, but I think smart team defender off the ball. I don't know. I just, one of those guys I would want to, add to my team if you know the value was right at some point i'd be very excited to get hawkes on the roster yeah and i i've done a big kind of 180 on hawkes obviously uh-huh. not to the level of Corey, nick and albert where you know they have him nick securely too, in their first rounds yes. um but i i have him top 45 so you know very late first to early second, I, I think it makes a ton of sense. I and mean, he's super physical, really good athlete, really strong, uh, you know, can handle the ball, do a little bit of pick and roll creation if needed, uh, does the dirty work, good rebounder, physical defender, all of that kind of stuff that he does all the stuff that your stars don't really want to do. Right. And that that's a really good guy to bring off the bench or even, you know, if needed, slot in a starting role, you know, like you look at the Phoenix Suns and, putting him as kind of that small ball four uh, to muck things up, kind of like how Torrey Craig did. I think there's a real role for him like that going forward. Um, The big thing with him that I still kind of get hung up on is the shot. And it just hasn't really taken the strides that I feel like it it's needed to. I mean, he's in the 33rd percentile spotting up uh, and shot 31% from three in those situations the uh, catch and shoot numbers are a little better, uh, 56th percentile, dribble jumper, 45th percentile, 35% from three off the catch. I just, that's not good enough for the player that he's going to be in the NBA. I think he has some real potential to carve out that dirty work type of role, but the outside shooting really has to improve and maybe in the NBA where that's really his only directive on what to improve in, um, on his own time. And he's just practicing corner three after corner three after corner three, maybe it gets there, but we kind of have yet to see that. I, I get it. Um, you know, I, I think Hawkes is one of those guys where he's kind of a mid range assassin right now. Um, he also does a lot of work in the low post because of how good his footwork is he's he's been a mismatch kind of you know nightmare for for you know opposing teams there's a lot to his game i really like I, i'm right there with you i think if he can somewhat unlock a res, unlock a respectable outside shot excuse me on a consistent level then he's got the chance to carve out at a very lengthy career because of the rest of the tools he has he tested out at the combine better athletically than a lot of us were expecting. Um, I think there's just some nastiness and, and he checks a lot of boxes. Like Metcalf says of, he does stuff that people don't usually want to do. Like he is going to battle inside the trenches. He doesn't care if he's a little undersized for the type of player. Like you watch him, you think he's like a six, nine, you know, forward that just wants to be around the glass. And it's like, no, he's a little shorter, but it's just that mentality he plays with. It's going to be really interesting because would not surprise me if he just falls into the right hands, you know, probably ends up with the Miami heat somehow and becomes a starter in a couple of years. I, I'm just saying like, I, I like Hawkeyes a lot. So I'm going to try to shine some light on him. Um, what else you got? Hit me with your next one. All right. Um, I'm going with the guy that I've kind of been pushing for kind of kind of since the start of the season uh maxwell's on board with this as well crane guard trey alexander um, yeah baby here we go Talk i i i i really think that he's worthy of a late first round pick um the leaps he made as a on ball and off ball scorer the shooting the defense i mean he, he, just what is there not to like about this guy and just looking at his synergy profile 83rd percentile pick and roll ball handler, 92nd percentile spot up, 59th percentile off screens. Um, 
then just the the shot really improved 85th percentile overall on jumpers 90th percentile shooting off the catch 74th percentile shooting off the dribble and then you factor in the defense and his ability to, to navigate screens guard multiple positions i i really don't understand why this guy is at best being slotted in the you know 45 to 50 range i absolutely love him a- absolutely love him just one of those guys i i'm right there with you i feel like me and you have talked plenty about him off the air um every time i i i watch him i'm just like i what what am i missing here I- um I just think he can play. I think we saw in the tournament he could play. Like he showed that he was carrying Creighton sometimes in those games. Um, and I, another guy we both love that, you know, you were first to start the fan club is Kobe Bufkin. And we keep looking at both of their numbers and are like, these two are very similar statistically. Mm-hmm. So I just have a lot of, intrigue about trey alexander potentially being an absolute highway robbery wherever you get him it's not someone i'm saying it happens right away but yeah is this an andrew nemhard situation of last year where you get him at 35 ish and you're like "Woo, look at what we got in the second i don't know um i like his game a lot i think he could play i think he is one of those don't get married to the stats because he does a lot of good stuff on the court and you look at his stats and they're very damn impressive. So, you know, it, it's just going to be fascinating. He averaged 13.6 points, 4.2 rebounds, 2.6 assists with shooting splits of 44, 41, 82. Pretty damn good. Um, round six, four. I think he's got just the length and ability you want. So, Midcap's two for two. He's 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 starting off really good. Um, yeah. So else? just yeah, be, just real quick before we move on. Yeah, off go ahead. Him. Um, what what is the argument against him? I don't know. Because it's I, one of these guys that it just is like, why is there not more buzz? And I don't know. Like we've talked about him before. He has the games you go look in the box score and he has big games. Um, is it the defense for you or what is it? I, I legitimately don't know. Um, I, maybe the play, the playmaking is not where people want it to be, but I still think he's more of a shooting guard than a point or combo guard. Um, I think he runs a decent two man game. I wrote about his pick and roll creation earlier this year over at no ceilings on barry.com hundred percent free. Uh, go subscribe. Um, but like I, I don't expect him to initiate the offense. I mean, that bar is so freaking high for NBA anyways that 99% of these guys aren't going to be in that role to begin with. But you put him off ball. You let him run a DHO on the weak side. Um, you know, he's spotting up in the corner or the wing and can he can attack closeouts. He can pull up off the dribble. He can run a pick and roll. Um, I, I think he's a really good defender. He moves his feet well. He gets around screens really well. Um I don't know because he's not an elite athlete. I agree with you that I don't think it's going to be a rookie year. Like, Oh my God, look at Trey Alexander type thing. But year three, it's like, Oh wow. Okay, here we go. Here's the jump that he's made. Like, I don't think it's really that ridiculous that he could end up having or playing an Austin Reeves type of role. That's a good one. I, I think you're spot on when it comes to he's probably more of a com- a, a two than a one. But now with the NBA, it's more combo guard. So it's like, okay, can you just flat out play? And the answer is yes for me when I'm watching Trey Alexander. Um, he measured in at the combine at six three and a quarter without shoes. Key emphasis there. And if I'm going off of last year's numbers, Everyone with shoes, because this year they didn't do it with shoes. Everyone with shoes last year, it was about an inch addition to up. So we're going to say he, he's going to be around six four and a quarter or more. And he had a six ten wingspan. So like checking boxes again, like it, it's just, you know, there's some guys last year that were like an inch and a half <laughs> taller in shoes. And I was like, okay, what? So I'm like, okay, if Trey's going to potentially be, six five ish or you know almost six five with a six ten wingspan and he could play i i just like his game a lot um i don't know 
Okay, so we just real quick, America's favorite game, this or that. Um, I was gonna have a, <laughs> I, I'm guys. I tried today. I told Mick out before the show. I tried to get an idea. It didn't work out. So I got to go back to the lab, but we'll get some theme music. It's soon. fine. You, you let everyone down. We're moving on. <sighs> get in um, line. <laughs> okay. Uh, Trey Alexander or Combine Darling Amari Bailey? Trey Alexander. Uh, Trey Alexander or Ben Shepard? Mm, I'm sorry. I got to stick with my guns. I'm going to say Trey Alexander. Trey Alexander or Isaiah Wong? No, don't. Why do you always get to play the torturer? I mean, Hannibal Lecter over here. Uh, I'm going to go Trey. Uh, Trey Alexander or Ricky Council? Trey. Trey or Nick Smith Jr.? No, Nick Smith. Now you're now you're just being evil. Trey or Turquavian? Um, I still have Turqu- Turquavian, but... Okay. That's probably one I'm going to be dancing with the devil until for the next couple of weeks. Hit me with the same answers. So what um, are you or Turk or Turk or I, I, I had Trey over all of them. Okay. Just going off my board. Okay. And I have him and Turk back to back. I got Turk a little above Trey. And then I got literally Isaiah Wong, like right behind Trey. So that one hurt. I like both Isaiah and Trey because of the same kind of vibes i think they're a little underrated i think trey could shoot better obviously i like i trust trey's versatility offensively i think isaiah wong has some lower body explosiveness laterally that's pretty freakish um i think doesn't get enough praise like i think he could get through traffic and do some stuff that you're like whoa he's explosive yeah he's just very explosive and i think that makes up for some stuff like he does a good job navigating, but Trey, I think just is always in control. He looks big on the court when you watch those games, he looks big on film. Like, so I think he's going to be one of those guys that plays under control with pay, with poise. And I don't know. So moving on. I, or no, I can well, sorry, I'm going to cheat right now because Gosh. Isaiah Wong was on my list. So we can talk about Isaiah. Let's just talk about him. All right. So we'll, are we considering this for you or yeah, for no, me? I'm calling dips okay. on this. All right. So you get three, you get three. Um, Okay, I, I Isaiah's in my top 40. Okay, I have him at 45. Okay, well, you're wrong. I have him at 39. I love him. Watched him in the combine. It's what I've seen on tape. I think he's going to be that next wave of guards in this class in which it's like pick your, pick your poison. Of, do you want the good size or do you want the feistiness with like Mike Miles or do you want maybe some size with Isaiah Wong who could play a little bit combo I think he's got a shot to to really be a, a heck of a player because I think the additional spacing he's very crafty in the lane like I was just hinting on I think the shot is better than we might think and I'm not saying it's like oh it's really good I just think it's not gonna be like oh Isaiah Wong can never become a respectable three-point shooter at the next level. I think it's not going to be his bread and butter, but I think he knows that. Um, and then I go back to the tournament. Dude, play great. Uh, so, like, I, I watched his whole last year of film. Then I'm going off of what I watched at the tournament. Then he goes to do it at the combine. He just keeps doing everything. And I'm like, what am I, you know, why not Isaiah Wong? Because he's an upperclassman. If he was doing this as a freshman, we'd have him in the lottery. But I'm just saying, um, I like him a lot, Metcalf. I really, really do. And were you, we talked about him before via text. Were you saying you're you're lower on his defense? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty hit or miss. Um, For everyone listening, Metcalf talks to me about everyone's defense. So sometimes I have to be <laughs> like, which one was it? Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I just think it's really inconsistent. But I think he's a good enough athlete where it can at least get to average. Um, and then in the NBA, I think he would, you know, it'd be surprising if he was in a similar type of role. I would expect his responsibilities to be much less. And if that's the case, then, you know, I, I, I think there's some optimism that it could improve. Um because I mean, he, he's a really, really, really good athlete. I think it's just a kind of a consistency thing with him. Um 
he's another kind of similar to Hawk he's another one of these guys where I've really kind of come around on his game. Um, it's taken a couple of years, but I was really skeptical about him before because, and I think a big part of it was that he originally started at Miami as their point guard. And then that shift to shooting guard really kind of, I think threw off a lot of his game and he didn't, wasn't really sure how to operate um, away from the ball and not as that primary guy. And this year we saw him take that big leap. That level of comfort really came around the, the he's going to have to shoot it obviously. And I, I think that's just a, a qualifier that we can put on all of these guys that we're talking about today. Um, but shooting and he shot 40% from three off the catch on 75 attempts this last year, that that's a decent volume and a really good result. So if he can replicate some of that um, and then just hone in and tighten up the defensive consistency, I don't see why he couldn't be a rotation guard. I mean, he averaged 16, four and three with um, almost a steal and a half a game shooting splits of 44, 38, 84. It's a really good numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's solid numbers. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He's gonna go to summer league, put up a twenty burger one game, and I'm gonna be just walking the strip, you know, giving high fives out to random strangers. Um, all right, who you got next? No, I'm gonna do this or that with you for Isaiah oh. Wong because okay. he threw the heat at me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it right back. Um, Isaiah Wong or Amari Bailey? Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah Wong or. Jalen Wilson. Isaiah. I knew that answer. Okay. And this is where I'm really going to hurt myself. Isaiah Wong or Mike Miles? Um, don't ask questions you don't want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't want to answer it. Okay. You don't have to. Let's just Isaiah. keep that. Okay. Oh, gosh. Look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> um, all right. We'll move on. Uh, I got one. Or I got uh, two? Yeah. yeah you, you, got, you got two because... Because I'm a snake. Um, I had Trey on my list. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna bring up someone later because I don't even know. It might be cheating to call him a a sleeper. Um, let's talk about Ben Shepard. I'm gonna say Ben Shepard. So let's talk about Ben. What are your thoughts? Um. I'm more Has he been doing this all year, and now he's just getting the late buzz, and everyone's like, oh, well, I guess we got to move up Ben Shepard. And um, that one includes me. I did not have Ben Shepard, you know, for the most of the year in my top 60. I've had to go back and reevaluate because now I'm seeing some good stuff and hearing some good stuff. And um, it's cool. Hey, this is really cool when a guy like this all of a sudden gets a little bit more spotlight. And, you know, Maxwell did a fantastic piece mm -hmm. at No Ceilings. Um, sorry for everyone else at No Ceilings. If you talked about him, um, it's just try. I'm trying to keep track of everyone. Um, but I like Shepard. I think he's got a lot of boxes that are going. This is something I'm sorry. This is important to say. This is something that we have to realize as evaluators when it comes to the draft cycle. NBA front offices are going to get married to ideas and skills that can translate more than us as evaluators. So they're going to put someone higher up on their boards because, you know, they're looking at Ben Shepard and they're saying like, Oh, you know, lethal shooter. Um, potentially what is he? He's going to be over six, six. Um, is he that big? He measured in at six, five and a quarter. That's a really so good. He's, height really good height and he had a six, seven and three quarters wingspan. So not the greatest wingspan, but he's going to be a potential catch and shoot. Good frame, smart, hardworking kid. That seems like he probably is going to be an awesome locker room presence. Just going off of what I've, you know, heard, seen, read, I don't know. I think he's going to check a lot of boxes. He's a hot name right now. I think he's improved his stock a lot. We'll see how much that improves. I think this is one of those cases now where Ben Shepard's going to have to go carry that momentum into private workouts. And if he can keep impressing, that name's going to keep buzzing. And that's how you start getting that avalanche of a snowball to keep 
you know, seeing you go up the the board. So where where are your thoughts at right now, Metcalf, with Belmont's sharpshooter, Ben Shepard? Um a little more hesitant to buy the hype um than others. I still have yeah. a little more I need to watch, but I I he moved up into my top 60 I, and I have him like middle of the second I have him at like 46 or something right now um, I, I have him at 44 so I'm right there with you the, but we're the talking round, sleepers you right. know like, and and that's like everyone's gonna be like oh you're just riding the momentum thing I'm like no 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 no. like I, I had been probably in my top 70 most of the year I just was like I don't know and then I went back and watched some more stuff and I've started slowly moving him up but now he's just he's the hot name and it's not like I you know Guys, I, I submitted my board before the combine. Like, calm down. So, I don't know. Yeah, and, like, the first round stuff is a little rich for me. Um, I was skeptical about how it would really translate against higher-level competition because a lot of the competition that Belmont faced was not the best or the cream of the crop. Um, no offense to those guys. But when you look at his numbers, and the the – Kate can just shoot an 80th percentile in spot up, 84th percentile pick and roll, 76 in transition, 76 running off screens, um, 92nd overall on jump shots, 85th off the catch, 93rd off the dribble. The kid can shoot. And if you have, if that does tr- really translate to the next level for him, then he's probably going to end up returning first round value. And just, you know, going through my notes, you know, every pro after every game it's shooting getting to his spots mid-range pull-up attacking closeouts um shot creation and if that stuff translates it kind of nullifies the you know concerns or doubts i have about his ability to finish through contact or explosiveness or you know they some of the defensive inconsistencies if you're shooting at that level there's going to be a role for you in the nba I don't know. He, I, I'm, I'm struggling with it. I get the intrigue. A lot of it feels very reactionary to an awesome combine, um, which is but, fine. Which yeah, is fine. You yeah, know, absolutely. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and I very easily could be on the wrong side of that. Yeah. Reactionary. Um. So, I'm intrigued. I like him, but I'm not, you know, sprinting to the podium to take him. I guess. It's and and what I wanted to go off of earlier when I was saying like NBA teams are going to think different than us. They're, Here's what they're going to look at with Ben Shepard. He put up big numbers. You know, he averaged 18.8 points per game. Um, five rebounds. Shooting splits, 47, 41, and then 68, which I can't stand. Um, an effective field goal percentage Almost of 56.3. They're going to look at Shepard and say, shooting guard with good size, good release, good form, good frame, and can shoot the cover off the ball. And they're going to be like, at some point in this draft, that's very desirable. Yeah. And especially at the end of the first, if you're getting high intangibles with that NBA skill, with today's modern NBA, it wouldn't shock me if he gets into that conversation of late first. And, you know, I, like I said, I have him at 44. It's, you know, and, and I think this is a time of the year where you're supposed to go back and look at some stuff. Because guess what? NBA front offices are doing it and they've been scouting all year. So they're going back and rewatching stuff. So anyone that's just like, you can't tinker with your board. Give me a break. Like, this is what you do. We, we, we go back and we reevaluate, reassess, measure about who's leaving, who's staying in. Then you start to figure out. And, you know, there's been some guys that have been praising Ben Shepard all year. I was not one of them. Hat tip to them. Like, yeah, really proud of it. Maxwell killed it. He's an, he's an animal. We get it. But, um, this is where it makes sense because Metcalf, we've talked about this. Where where does the range start in this draft for you, in which we just get chaos factory, like after twenty five? No, thank you. <laughs> after twenty five ish. Um. Y- yeah, I like it when I'm looking at my board and I'm like, I hate all of this. Yeah, right about there. Like I would say twenty five to. 40 for me i yeah I like my more um i could yeah. see anyone going in that range and i think ben shepherd's now in that mix mm-hmm. of where it's like like for example i have turquavy on at 35 i could see turquavy on going 26th somehow um andre jackson i love him 
I have him at 41. I could see him going 28th. Like, it's just... Do you really have him at 41? God oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm so getting, do I. So do I. It's, oh, gosh. It's okay. Well, I love him, too. That's where I'm in a... It's a problem. <laughs> because I, I already look at my board. I want to move him up to 36. But it's so wide open. Like, I think having an early second mm-hmm. rounder and a late first rounder is almost fantastic trade value. Because there's going to be so many different names that, you know fall down the board it's gonna be a really good value year so i think shepherd's now in that mix where like i have him lower right now yeah but nba teams are going to love what he's bringing to the table and that's why with this draft i could see them being like screw it give us the sharpshooter with you know who's a hard worker and and he's got good size so i'm just i'm all over the place but it makes sense to me now it makes sense this time of the year and you know and the he he was the alpha and omega for Belmont's offense. I mean, when he yes. was on the court, um, they had a offensive rating of 111.6, which was 32nd. And when he was off that dropped to 103.3, which was 193rd. Um, what he proved all year as a shooter um, was really special. And that ability to get to his spots was really, really impressive. I, I just, it's tough because we can't go back and make him play against new competition. He did at the combine. He executed, he held up his end of the bargain. There are just some things that I have to kind of go back and relook over. And it's like, okay, is this going to be a backup point guard? Is this going to be an off ball shooting guard? What is his role? But he can shoot the shit out of the ball and those guys always find a role. So I'm just like looking at, I'm just going to keep it at the second round. Um, just for the sake of this, but if you went 31 to Detroit, wouldn't hate that. Um, Indiana feels a little redundant. San Antonio wouldn't hate it. Charlotte wouldn't hate it. Boston wouldn't hate it. I would not hate that. Oklahoma I'm, City at 37 wouldn't hate it. Like it makes sense. But and it makes a lot of sense. Go ahead. If, sorry. If, 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 no, just if you can shoot, there's a spot for you and he can shoot. And it's not just stationary catch and shoot stuff. It's, Get, it's the ability to get to his spots, get to the mid range attack, closeouts, run a pick and roll, get to it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's not standstill only. There's versatility and efficiency to it. So it, it's really enticing. So yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm up again. Yep. Because you cheated. All right. right. Um. Let me get my list back. You know what? I, I'm just going to bring him up. He's not a sleeper anymore, but this is the name. OMP. Mm. You down with OMP? Give me the give me the full name because I feel like I'm going to mess up the middle name. Um, Olivier Maxence. Maxence. Dang. Maxence Prosper. Oh. Rucker, take a drink. I um this is the hot one. This is this is the sizzling one. This one's on the afterburner. It's you, you got to run to the kitchen to, to cool it off because it's overflowing. You know, smoke's coming out. Um, I, I did some film diving before this one. I was watching OMP. I even threw it into Metcalf. I said, have you watched Prosper much lately? And I feel like I planted a seed. He's going to go. He's He's made some money. This yeah. last couple of weeks, I think he's going to end up in the first. Um, watch this film. The defense is very, very intriguing. I love how active his hands are. He is, if you've ever watched Family Guy, the wacky inflatable tube man, he is that. I love it so much. He's so damn active with his hands, and he's got that length. Um, I think the shot is trending in the right direction. Um, he's, he's just going to be this like simple simplicity with his game is going to play a long way in the NBA level. Um, like I think feel the team makes him like, Hey, be this versatile defensive asset space to floor with your outside shot. Don't try to do too much else when it comes to like putting the ball on the ground. Cause he's, he's very raw when it comes to trying to put the ball down, you know, understand how to finish when he's not going full speed, like stuff like that. But measured in at the combine, it's six, six and three quarters without shoes, seven, one wingspan, 212 pounds. Good numbers. Um, He's just lengthy as crap on the court. So 
I'm cheating a little bit. I don't think he's necessarily a sleeper anymore yeah. because I think he's going to go in the first round somehow. But, um, you know, I'm down with o- OMP. You know me. <laughs> yeah, so I just the, – the, the first – pro that I have listed uh, under, you know, all of my game notes for him, it's defense. And yes. that size, the the footwork, the fluidity, um, uh, you know, th- there's a lot to get really, really excited about. Uh, something that kind of surprised me is that he, his kind of defensive metrics were really underwhelming. I mean, wow. Block rate of 0.5 and a steal rate of, of, of 1.8. Like those are really average. Um, I expected at least the steal rate to be a lot higher than that. Um, the big thing with him is going to be the shot. And, you know, I, I think he's an awesome play finisher, uh, 94th percentile in transition, 90th percentile off the cut, but only 50th percentile spotting up. Um, I am a little more hesitant to really buy in on the shot. I and mean, he took six dribble jumpers all year. Um, 33.6% from three off the catch. Those aren't good numbers. And I don't think he necessarily has the touch where it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's like there, there's a high volume of floaters that executed at a really high level. We, we don't really have that with him. Um, obviously part of that is the role that he was asked to play and all that kind of stuff. But I think the shot is a lot more theoretical and I think it wouldn't surprise me if it never really comes along to a substantial level and people fall victim to really getting enamored with a guy who's training specifically for these open gym drills at the combine in front of audiences. Um, similar thing. Remember last combine when uh, Christian Coloco hit a like 11 of 12 threes and people were clamoring about how he's going to be a shooter. This isn't Coloco slander. I had him in the first round <laughs> settle good. down. My God. God good. Oh, good. My Lord. I don't um, need that shit in here. No, Excuse but he's not French. a shooter. I know um, that. And everyone was like, Oh, is he going to spend? And I was like, no, no, he's been doing this and showcasing it just because they like, come down. Right. I, so, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Go ahead. So circling back, I th- just for the record, in case there's confusion, I think OMP is going to be a much better shooter than Coloco. N- that's not what I'm saying. What I I also don't think he's going to be a 40% three point shooter. Um, I think he's there's a very real world where he turns into Mo Harkless, Alfred Camino. Those are really good players. Those are really good role players who are you know good defenders and. Played a very long the, time in the league and, and had great careers. Yes, but they also struggled to uh, find roles later in their career because the shot never really came around. I get it. I mean, it's. I feel like he's got. Uh, he reminds me of another Marquette product, but he's not his body's got to fill up way more and he's got to become a more consistent three point shooter. But he gives me like, I think Jay Crowder should be his path yeah. that he wants to be on. Like just be like this nasty defensive physical player that makes a very long career. And he plays with a high motor. Sometimes you're going to have to pull the reins back. I think with especially the ball in his hands, but um, I like the tools. He's a junior, but he's going to be turning 21 in July. So I kind of like that had a big year of jump in production confidence is soaring. But I think what Mick have said that is so important is all these guys are going to look fantastic in workouts because they've been literally tailor made for these guys to look good in workouts. So don't get too caught up in it. But fact that he, you know, was one of the winners of the combine, he's got some momentum Length is always sexy for front office executives and scouts. They love it. Um, he's got, he's going to check all those boxes. I just think this is a sleeper. This is a name that if don't be shocked, if he starts creeping up some boards, um, it's going to be really interesting. So, okay, I'm done. You got, you got two or you got another one. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I got two more, but f- let's take our last break. All right, Rucker. So I think I would guess that this guy's on your list and he's the name that basically just sparked this 
whole yeah, episode waiting. for us last week. Okay. Um, Bobby waiting. Clintman, Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. Uh, seems like he's staying in, which is kind of the surprise. I mean, he pulled out of the combine. Um, curious if he has a uh, first round promise there, or even at least a an early second round promise. Where are you at with Bobby? Um, I I feel like I'm going to be lower than a lot of people. Mm. Um, and it's not. I think he's got really intriguing talent but i think this is one of those late rush very exciting because it's something newish and maybe this is a year too early um i have a lot of questions about his game there's a lot of really awesome stuff that like if i was at like a store trying to find something cool it would probably be at the top of my list but I also think there's some stuff that like personally myself as an evaluator sets off red flags of like, I've been down this road before and it always comes back to bite me and I'm still a little concerned. So like what? I need a burst. He's got no burst. Um, He's super fluid, super yep. fluid. It's so impressive. Like I, I've even gone back and watched him in FIBA with Sweden and he's super fluid. There's yep. some playmaking stuff. He averaged like over, I want to say around like five assists a game with that Sweden team. Some really intriguing playmaking stuff. It just is always seems like it's in one gear. Uh, maybe like two or three gears. I need another gear. So I think watching it there and then watching it in the in Wake Forest, his shot's gorgeous. Yes. Shot, I love it. It's really pretty. Um, he looks like he's got the potential to be a nightmare down there outside. Um, I just think there's a lot of stuff that like, I need that next level to just be unlocked. But I think like the burst I feel like he, he, he can't really get it's, it's tough for me. Cause I feel like he, he shows some playmaking flashes, but he can't really get any separation off the bounce. Um, I don't know. It, it's, I'm trying to remember everyone I watched today. I feel like I had questions about his defense. Maybe oh, really? no, he he had some good defensive stuff. I feel like oh, man, was it I, work with him or no? No, nah. I I really liked his defense. I thought he was a smart team defender. Um, really good yes, with rotations. Yes, yes. okay, of, yes. rarely out of position. Um, I thought the on ball kind of fundamentals, the way he moved, like you said, was fluid. But there isn't that explosiveness there where theoretically you would love for him to be able to you know switch on to like a two um but i don't think he's going to be quick enough to do that and i i I can kind of understand that concern um but i i thought i really came away really liking his defense my bigger concern was he was just not involved on offense at all like his usage was minuscule um i think the shot looks good i knew the 73rd percentile and spot up um I trust that he'll be able to knock down the, you know, three pointers off the catch. I think he shot 38% ish right around there uh, from three in spot up situations. That's a really good number, but he didn't really do anything else. Um, The cutting, I thought that was promising. I thought he was a decent off ball mover, not really a movement shooter, the straight line drives. He's really big and the handle is okay enough where he can kind of shield his guy off and get to the rim. But He's not crossing guys up. He's not creating space for pull-ups. He's not a dynamic ball handler. The playmaking flashes were fun and exciting, but super inconsistent and really hit or miss. So I'm just not really sure what he's going to be on offense other than like a corner three type guy who, you know, cuts baseline off of drives and whatnot. Um, But for me, the big takeaway was the defense. It's the defense is what I was – getting him confused um Hawkes's close out footwork drive drove me crazy and then Clintman I liked his defense I was like this is very smooth but I'm with you about the offense is like where else is he making the impact with that? it it seems like this lengthy tall big forward with a great shot that everyone's like is this something and you're just like 
It's sort of, but it, and it's just frustrating because this might also be just the super raw, like you go mm-hmm. get him and try to figure it out because FIBA U20 European Championships, he averaged 16, 10, 5, 2.6, and almost a block per game in 29 minutes. Good so numbers. very good numbers. And I don't know. It's just a struggle of like, I'm not putting him in my top 20. Um, yeah. That's a little crazy for me right now. Shout out to anyone that does that. But I I have him around 50. I understand that there's some people that have him much higher. I understand there's some people at No Ceilings that love him. I really like him. I'm just not this person that's like, I'm going to go take this really raw player at the top 25. If I could get Bobby Clintman at, like if I had him at 48 and I absolutely loved him and I could get Bobby Clintman at 36, I'd be pretty pumped. I'd be like, let's do this. This is worth, this is the area where this is worth it because if he returned to Wake Forest or transferred, whatever portal combat and dominated, he might be a lottery pick. So like, that's where I understand it, but maybe your team in the first that, yeah, pre-draft, maybe you're a team in the first that has multiple picks and then I get it. If you draft, you know, if Indiana loves Bobby Clintman and you have the 29th pick, go for it. But if you had one pick in the first round and you're taking it on him, I'd be like, we better have a good roster. (laughs) We better, you know, not needed this one because at that point, it's just like, I don't know. But I don't want to sound like I'm rooting against him. I just think there's a lot more stuff that I'm not sold on. And I'm, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm being honest. I feel pretty good about what I'm seeing. All right, all of Sweden. You can uh, attack him at Tyler underscore Rucker. Uh, I love I Sweden. <laughs> okay. I like him a lot. It just, it just top twenty. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, but, no, I, I, I can't get that. I have him at thirty nine. Um, I get so, that, and I might like, have him like, starting just... at twenty six with that Indiana pick. That's kind of where it starts yes. making sense for me, for so. sure. And if you believe, you believe. Like, I get it. Um. That's what I said. I said, get to 25, get past 25. And then I, I can understand it. If I got him early third or second round, I would be very pumped up. If I got him late first and I had multiple picks, I'd be probably pumped too. But I think he's just got a ways to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's next? Oh man, I forgot I'm up. Um, gosh, I really didn't want to feel like I just rip Bobby apart, but you know, no, it's fine. You, you hate Bobby. No, program, I don't. You know? I don't. Um, yeah, he's a friend of the program. Um, <laughs> whoops up. Yeah. He's 38 <laughs> now. Sleepers, 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 sleepers. I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to give my boy Andre Jackson some love. Let's talk about me. Some Andre Jackson. So this is the problem is Andre Jackson did exactly what I thought he was going to do at the combine. Mm-hmm. He played in the game. He didn't put up the craziest numbers, but every time I was watching the game, he made a play. And I was just like, son of a gun. You're <laughs> literally Inspector Gadget. You're a game wrecker. So I'm so fascinated. Like, I have a list of just storylines in my head that I'm like, these are, I'm more interested in this than, you know, who goes top three. I'm more interested in like where Leonard Miller goes. <laughs> Where the Nick Smith, the Reek, like where do they go? Does someone still buy in? And then Andre Jackson's landing spot is right up there. I'm just fascinated because the shot, you know, it, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Which is not good. It is what it is. I saw like videos of him shooting in, in the combine. I was just like, oh man, it is what it is. <laughs> it's like, oh, but that is, that he gets in the improved. game and he makes plays that yeah. not a lot of guys can make. So it's like do you just get them in and, and you're like, this is going to work for us? I don't know. But I like them. Um, I'm so – and and I'd like him if he didn't have the potential to just be a f- fighter jet taking off a runway. But he also has that in his game of where he can just be a transition demon. So, I don't know. The shot is – It's so bad. It makes me feel better about my shot. <laughs> and I've got one of those Halliburton catapults, but mine doesn't go in. So, I mean, 
I'm more, I'm more of the Kobe Brown who's also on my list uh, of just like, I just, you know, do all the other stuff, but Kobe Brown can shoot. So I take that back. Um, yeah. I don't know. What more are you at Metcalf with Mr. Andre Jackson 3000? I just can't quit him. Uh, still yeah, have him, it. still have him 41. Um, I, I know just you just in, told me you had him 41. Insane, so insane defender, good passer, just makes plays. He's a gamer. Um, it's just chaos personified. Um, I don't trust the shot at all. I'm not sure that he'll ever hit starter quality, but if he can figure out any way to just shoot like over 30% off the catch from three, I think there's a non-zero chance of him having an Andre Iguodala-esque career. Obviously, that's the very highest, 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 highest outcome for him. But that athleticism, the playmaking, the transition, the defense, all that kind of stuff, it's everything that teams want from role-playing wings. And he's just got to figure out some way to be able to stick on the floor. Um, on offense he should talk to Bruce Brown's trainer and figure out what he did with his shot. Um, if he can kind of carve out that type of role. Now we're talking about a really, really fun player, but yes, yeah. I know Bruce Brown was also a much better college shooter. Um, before, no, but it b- makes before the hand or wrist injury is one of those things. Andre needs to, I think the, the shot, I think he could figure out a way to be, a very awesome rotation piece without the shot needs mm-hmm. to go to the right system yeah. needs to go somewhere that just has shooters galore and they just let him run wild and do what he does best. But he needs to be versatile like Bruce Brown. Um, like if he went sense. to Sacramento at 38, I just was looking at that. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, it, it I gets that. fun. It gets really fun. Like or even Denver at 40 Denver adding him. And then having year two Peyton Watson, my gosh. And Christian just, Brown. Ooh, just have, but there, we just talked about like Watson length, Andre Jackson athleticism, craziness, just playmaking. And then literally Christian Brown's your shooter. It's so like that makes some sense. Sacramento, you put him and Davion Mitchell at the court at the same time, just go b- bananas. I don't know. I like him. I, I, it, I talk myself into him quicker than any other prospect because I'm just like, I, I I don't want to bet against it. I, it makes sense. And he just makes plays on the court. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. So, um, okay. Well, that's all I got, unless you got somebody else. Um, last one, just real quick. Uh, Colin Castleton, um, center from Florida. Oh, I'm proud of you for this one. You really, okay. Talk to me. Sell me, um, sell me on Castleton. So, I mean, I, I've always been really skeptical about him, but just finally finalized my uh film dive with him and i i think he's a top 60 guy for me um love that and it's not nothing he does is overtly shocking or like oh my god that's an nba guy but it's all really kind of consistent and reliable um the the big standout for me was how much better his he moved um in space on defense than I anticipated. Uh, he's not going to be a guy who switches on the perimeter or anything, but if he's guarding like a, an athletic big, he can stay with them when they drive and can stay in front of them and, you know, show a di- couple different coverages and pick and roll really good shot blocker. He's a little jumpy on defense, uh, needs to rein that in, but strong rebounder, really good defensive footwork, uh, strong defender. And then the offense, you know, good footwork, decent touch. Uh, the passing is what really stood out though. Really good connective passer, quick decision maker, uh, can find guys out of the short roll, out of post-ups, stuff like that. So I don't think he's ever going to be a starting center, but I really do think there's a career for him um, as a serviceable backup center. Makes sense. Feels like that's a name that's been buzzing a little bit around our circle, like some positive, positivity no Corey saw him in person was very impressed um it's one of the i i that's one of those i gotta watch too i gotta go back and watch so now uh, this is where i love like sorry folks i'm i'm re-watching everyone and then there's some new names that just get sprinkled in so don't change your opinion though yeah 
I'm gonna. Um, okay. I I got a lot of names that I want to bring up. I can't pick one. Um, but, but, do you want to just run through them rapid fire? Yeah, sure. That works better. Um, I have to give a shout out to a friend of the program. I got to give a shout out to Dylan Jones. Mm, yep. He was on my list. Um, okay. Well, I'll say Dylan Jones was my last one, but I had some other names I wanted to shout out. But Dylan, you know, we did a, me and Corey did an episode of the draft act where Dylan came on. Um, was one of my favorite, you know, things I've been a part of with no ceilings besides this podcast, my cap. Yeah. But no, no, that's fine. No, it was just unbelievable to hear him talk about the game. If you haven't watched that, I promise you it's worth your time. Like, He's a film junkie. Like yeah. he just talks about how much he watches NBA guys and picks their games apart. He talked about Dame. He talked about, you know, obviously he had the Dame connection from he goes to Weber State as well. And we saw him in Portland. Metcalf was there. Um, I just got the vibes in some of those scrimmages. I was like, he's got that YMCA old man game where he's just lengthy, weird build but just can do a little bit of everything he's the playmaker he's the shooter he's the rebounder always looked in control um i think he gives me sort of like Taylor horton tucker offensive vibes mm. and then he just kept making plays at the combine i mean he he impressed at the g league ignite or i mean the g g league elite camp got invited to the combine he impressed in those games he was taking charges he was making the extra pass he was hitting and ones he was hitting jumpers i was like man dylan have an experience so i'm rooting for him to get drafted i don't think this is a fluke because maxwell again was on him early in the year shouted him out um saw him in portland before we did that video i went and watched his game and i was like there's something here yeah i was and, like and I he, don't... he was really good at hoop summit really good at hoop summit and then i watched his film and i was like there's serious stuff here yeah. Like there is some really intriguing playmaking. And the reason why I love doing those or hearing or doing those prospect interviews is because you could tell he's watched guys on film do stuff and literally brought it to his game. Yeah. And that hearing him, how smart he was, how attention to detail I was, I was like, that is something if I was an NBA team, I would be obsessed with because that is where you find a piece, a diamond in the rough. So I just have to give a shout out to him. And he's got the numbers to back it up. I mean, he's like six six. He averaged 10 boards a game. Um can do a little bit of everything. Uh, and I just was impressed with him at the combine. I think he I think he's got a shot to get drafted now. So there's my super sleeper. Shout out, Dylan. Good luck. Yeah. L love it. Was if very stays, impressive. If film. he stays, I don't know. I yeah. might go back. Who knows? Yeah. Um, all right. Any anyone else or anything um, else? Rapid fire guys. I had Kobe Brown. Um, I still think it's just going to work out. I, I think he's got so much versatility. Jalen Clark. I just love his defense so much. Yeah. I, I I really do. And I think that's one of those, like he's dealing with an injury. I think he might just I think he might have more fans in front offices than the public realizes. So yeah. I don't know. What do you, what else do you have? Did you have any other names? Reese Beekman. I also had, I still like Reese a lot. Um, I I feel like Zach Zach Eady deserves a little more credit and love yeah, than he's gotten. I mean, it's be an interesting one. He's I, I still good. Have a mid second, but I I think he's going to be an NBA guy. Um, uh, Demoy Hodge still a fan Demoy. of. I do too. Demoy, I hear it. Demoy, I like it. God, that that was wasn't funny the first time, but. Here we are. Um, I had City Sissoko on my list. I thought that was cheating when the lights yeah. were down in the city. I'll give you all the puns you want, Metcalf. Game game five tonight, baby. I'm off the rails. Um, anyone, anyone you were like, eh, I don't know. I think Seth Lundy's done some good stuff. Intrigued. Uh shot was a lot was the 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 outside shot and his ability to kind of knock down tough pull-ups was really impressive this year. Um, and that was something I wasn't really expecting. Uh, the defense, I was pretty underwhelmed by. So, Nicole Jur Nicola Jurisic is still going to have my heart. Um, just wish <laughs> I, I, me and you so, texted off the air after I saw that video of him working out. And I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> I mean, I loved him. 
I, I still love him. I still think that's worth a shot. Like, I still think there's so much his passing in his game. is nasty. And I never came away from a game, be, well, besides a couple of them, feeling like, God, this dude's shot is busted. And then you look at the percentages and you're like, oh, it, it might be busted. He went like three for four one game and it his three point percentage went up like eight points. I was just like, <laughs> that tells you where he's at. Um, Okay, uh, real quick with Jurisic. Uh, I just don't know where to start. I love him. I absolutely love his game. Okay, so everything I'd want in a potential steal. He has it. So Nicola or uh, Mojave King? Nicola. Uh, Nicola or Jordan Miller? Nicola, and I love Jordan Miller. I was Uh, just about to say he was one of my sleepers. Nicola or Jordan Walsh? Nicola, Ooh. I think Jordan Walsh needs to go back, but I think yeah, he's so, going to stay in. So do I. Um, Nicola or Jalen Clark? Jalen. Okay. Okay. I had Nicola like top 30 for so long this year, yeah. and I just kept moving him down. And I was like, come on, man, just get the shot <laughs> going. And the. I'm 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 interested. Did you watch that video of his workout? I have not. He's got like the the Gavoni zoomed in on it, and it bugs me. And he's like right behind him, and he's got like the lower body twist. Oh, I hate that. With the upper body going straight, and it it like I feel like I was just staring at a roof at 2 a.m. Like, what is this going on? <laughs> like, is and, and that's something where like I will reach out to a buddy of mine and be like, "What are your thoughts?" Because I have a friend that I'm literally thinking on right now. Like, I'm gonna text my buddy Nick and be like, "He's the just has one of the prettiest shots I've ever seen in my life. Works with Steph Curry, blah blah blah." blah. And I'll be like, "What? What's wrong? Is it fixable?" And he will he won't sugarcoat it to me. He'll be like, "Oh boy," or he'll be like, "Oh, it can be fixed," but. I love everything he <laughs> has. He's like six, seven, six, eight. He he has unbelievable playmaking ability. It's just the shot came around. Someone is gonna find something. He measured in at six, seven, without shoes. So, I don't so know. Mario Hazonia. No, oh, gosh. I <laughs> this is what I hate. If anything, I hope he becomes a steal later because then we can get you know stop getting the oh all the international guys are busts when they go early, but um, what else you got? Anything? Are we, no, are we good? That, okay. That's all I got. I think we're, we're out of time. So Rucker plug away. Yeah, I'm going to plug everyone. Pay attention to this one. Metcalf. If you haven't listened to this, Metcalf has a piece going up tomorrow. I'm been so pumped about it. He's had this idea for like three months and I think it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, so go check it out at no ceilings, NBA.com. Follow me at Tyler underscore Rucker on Twitter. Draft Guide Monday. Get it. It's coming out. It's going to be awesome. Really pumped about it. Be on the look. You know, just subscribe to No Ceilings. You'll get all the details of where to find it. No Ceilings NBA.com. It's absolutely free. Love you all. Go Celtics. I hope there's a miracle tonight and there's a game six. I'm ready. Just, I'm ready to get nuts. Let's get nuts. So thank you, Metcalf. Love you. Absolutely. This is a blast. Good luck tonight. Uh, once again, I'm Tyler Metcalf. You can follow me on Twitter at tmetcalf11. You can find all of our No Ceilings merchandise, including the draft guide that goes out on Monday um, at noceilingsnba.bigcartel.com. And you can find all of our written work at noceilingsnba.com. It's 100% free. Make sure to subscribe while you're there to make sure that you never miss anything that we publish. By the time you're listening to this, um, unless it's very early in the morning, uh, my very long piece on Scoot Henderson uh, will be up. Really excited about it. Um, please, if even if you hate it, let me know. Um, I, I love feedback, um, but it is long. So apologies in advance. Try to dissect it into di- different areas of his game. So if you're really just intrigued or curious about just his defense or just his off ball offense, stuff like that. You can just skip to those sections, but please check it out. Um, and you can follow us across all socials at no ceilings NBA. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe, leave a review and five star rating until next time. See ya.